Well, hello there, my old friend. It's nice to see you again. And good day, everybody. Welcome to another video. This is Jerry from Backcountry Wrenching. And a few days ago, I got back from Backcountry Camping Trip. It was plus 20 degrees, and it was really nice. And now we're back to almost zero degree weather. Furnace is on, but the show must go on. Today, I'm going to start to descale as much rust as I can before I apply the POR 15. And I said this before, is that POR 15 actually applies and sticks on best after surface has already been seasoned by rust. And these two tools I'm going to use are going to help me out. And one of them is being our good friend, the needle scaler. Works really good for busting up the scale rust and then a wire brush, but uh, use face protection and gloves because when these wire bristles, or should I say wire bristles, fly off, they can uh, stick into your skin and clothing like little daggers. This is not your friend, but it works good. So needle scalers do use air, so if you don't have a compressor, you're kind of out of luck. I don't think they have an electric version, but they are loud, so uh, make sure you have ear protection. Here's a good example on the needle scaler at work, removing all of the light rust, which will make it easier to clean. Just have to reposition it on jack stands to continue working on the rust you see right there in the pumpkin i hit it it's time for the wheel of death Be sure you got a face shield on you don't want those wires going into your eyes So I did what I can until we get the axle fitted up. Basically all the wire brush does is polish the rust, get rid of anything else that's loose, get it ready for prep. But there's still lots of work to do. I need to take out the axles. I need to take off the spindle. And then we can really clean it up and get it ready. Differential has to come out clean it out all inside inspection there's still lots of work to do we do know from the last video is that the lower control arms are the same as the rear so now i need to get the tube bender out i have just enough two inch tubing left that i can make two control arms providing i don't screw it up if i screw it up i'm gonna have to buy some and that two inch dom is not cheap especially with inflation that's going on there's no escape just when you thought winter is over and it's late in the spring comes back with a vengeance well it's not too bad yet but it's gonna get worse well i'm back on days off and snow is starting to melt but it's not overly nice now we're back to struggle town here in my small garage. We're going to start making the control arms. So I got the laptop out. I never use Windows except some programs I have to. Otherwise I'm a dedicated Mac person. But I got the Bentex software out. Because uh, rear control arms and the front control arms were the exact same. So I'm making these ones here. So... Bend location, 4.774 for a 25 degree angle. 
in order to get that 25 degree angle to spring back probably gonna go about 27 degrees and got the two inch die in there sprayed some oil on her I should be good to go everything's set up just took the play out of it and by doing that I zero out and then start bending it this two inch quarter inch DOM takes a lot of pressure but we can do it come on 10 degrees 15 we're rocking Twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. That's where I'm gonna stop at, and then hit the release. Hit the spring back. So now the tension's off, and I'm right about twenty-five degrees. So I just got the old Rough Country lower control arm as reference, marking it out because I'm using the Johnny joint right here. So I'm trying to line it up a little bit, give or take. I got lots of thread in there for movement. I like to try to keep the thread short in as possible. And then going to line up there where I'm going to cut the two inch cut in order to weld the new joint on. I'm going to cut it. I got the evolution chop saw lined her up. I should probably throw that guard on there. In case you don't have one of these saws, these things are magical. I just got it propped up over there, and once upon a time I had power. Maybe I should plug it in. Operator error. Cool to touch. Not like an abrasive chop saw. Other one set up, ready to go. And when it's all said and done, I might have some extras left. Always make sure the slack is out and die is zeroed out. Otherwise, it's not gonna be a good time for you. 10 ton cylinder, air over hydraulic. Come on, baby, come on, work it, work it, work it. Last cut. <laughs> Honestly, don't know how people bend tube without the hydraulic cylinder. I can see you bending smaller tube, you know, under an inch, maybe up to an inch and a quarter, but I don't think it'd be physically possible to bend two inch, quarter inch wall DOM without hydraulics, unless you had a long cheater bar. I just lined that up as you can see 28 degrees sprung back to 25 lined up the mark and cut this last tube 
Now we've gone through all the trouble of bending the tube, fitting it up. Now we got to cut the notch that we can weld this style of bushing on. And this is one of the most critical and important parts because if you don't have it perfectly in here, that's going to change how that's going to be. Now this is not, I don't know, I say it's an okay tube notcher. It does the trick. Make sure that you're set where you're supposed to be. And I can see right now I'm not at zero degrees, so I need to change that. And then always use an electric drill. If you try to use a battery power drill, you're just going to wear out the batteries real quick. Like I tried that before and I'd probably cut like our drill for a minute and it'd kill the batteries. Just too much stress. I bought this cheap skill electric and it's a good thing I checked this because now I need to adjust this. And reset it back to zero. I think my drill's cooked. She's cooked. She's no more. It stinks in here and my drill died. The only thing I got left that I can finish this off is this 15 year old blue point that's clapped out. We'll uh, see how well this is gonna do. It's gonna stall out more times than not. Not gonna lie, the clapped out blue point drill <laughs> saved the day. This thing used to have a lot of power back in the day, but she's uh, on its last legs now. <laughs> Just doing fire watch right now to make sure she uh, doesn't start burning up. Looks like we're gonna be safe. Got everything I need, brake clean to clean the parts, non-chlorinated of course so I don't kill myself with poisonous gas. Got my Johnny joint, I got my bushings right here, got them from TMR Customs 2.625 bolt and then Johnny joint on the opposite end. This is set up, ready to tack weld. The reason why I'm tacking is not only for fit up, I want to make sure it's not going to be too long. Need to be a little on the short side, which is good. Gonna have to come out a few threads to even her out. I find with this GoPro, it seems to be having a lot of issues with files being corrupt. I'm not sure if I'm too impressed with that. GoPro 7 has problems even just recording. So frustrating. Things are looking good. Got the control arms tacked up. With that being said, I can squeeze the axle back underneath. Fit everything back up. Make sure everything's going to fit like it should with no issues. And then I can take these back out. Weld them up. And then... I can get ready to start the POR15 treatment on the axle and on the control arms and get everything set back underneath so we can move forward. New ball joints, new bearings, those Yukon axles. Gotta to toughen up this Dana 30 for the 35s. 
Don't want it to be too weak. Just got to be careful on the skinny pedal. Before I get ready to fit the control arms up, I just got the Johnny joints out. And I got that one in. Had to modify the frame a little bit for the grease nipple. And then this one here, of course, there's no grease nipple. So I'm going to have to pre-grease it. So I'm going to use shell grease in there. I know uh, they actually make Johnny joint grease, but for my purposes and where I live, this is going to have to be a yearly thing or even twice a year to take them apart and grease them. Because as you guys seen when I took them out, it was like a decade, almost a decade, maybe a decade. They're actually still in pretty good shape. Let's get that one in. So I just lubricated that hole a bit. So I'm going to try to push that in as far as it'll go. And then that went in really well. And you really want to make sure that snap ring is in or everything is going to come out. As you can see, I got the axle fitted up, but there is one problem that I didn't calculate for. You know, sometimes you go through the motions and you think about it and you research it and you think it's going to be a great idea. But one of the biggest things you didn't calculate is that that axle truss is made for a stock Jeep, not one that has an LS Vortec motor in it. And unfortunately, I ran into a problem that uh, the only way I'm going to be able to correct it is with um, bigger bump stops, unfortunately. Otherwise, it could be catastrophic failure on the trail. So if you guys have been watching this video series, you know we had a problem with the axle coming up and hitting the exhaust in the back there right but I didn't calculate that when I put the truss on you're adding what two inches and I'm not even at the bump stops yet and part of the oil pan and the crank pulley could come crashing down right onto the axle truss where before it didn't matter. I do believe I went with four and a half inch springs for the front as well. So that might compensate some for the compression if I hit a big bump in the road, but still it is not looking good. I had to double check, but yes, I did get four and a half inch springs for the front where before I had four inch that probably sagged a little bit. So now with four and a half inch springs, I'm probably going to have to go ahead and readjust all the control arms and measure the caster to make sure it's somewhere in spec. I think it's uh, 6.6. Seven degrees on one side and 6.3 give or take otherwise if it's out you could have some serious vibration that some people may refer to as death wobble but it's not death wobble I am pretty satisfied how everything's looking so I'm gonna get those control arms out maybe prop the pinion up with that chunk of wood so that removed the lower control arms. It doesn't roll on the old axle stands there, jack stands.
After all that welding, there's time to bust out the rocket stove, and this time I'm gonna use those pellets that I bought from Princess Auto that I used in the other stoves. So I'm gonna use a combination of wood and the wood pellets to see how it's gonna burn in the rocket stove. I've really been enjoying cooking on the rocket stove since I remodified it and put that grill on top, and I find that it works really well. I got my bison steak right there. Just gonna throw her on top of the old grill. And then I'm gonna move her over to the side so it's not getting totally devoured by the flames, but it works really well. Cooking my steak nice, medium rare. In the end, got steak, asparagus, mushrooms, and a Caesar. I'm good to go. All right, shut her down, everybody. It's the time to say goodbye, end this video. Got to crack open the Stella. It uh, We got a lot accomplished and getting closer. Once we get the axle POR 15, actually going to bust it apart first, take it all apart, take all the axles out, the differential, get everything out, and then we're going to prep it in POR 15, then start the reassembly. But anyway, I got to crack open this beer. Every video brings us one step closer to the end or more issues, one of the two. I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, I appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one.